When Hurricane Ian made landfall, its massive storm surge over 10 feet ravaged the freshwater wetlands of Sanibel Island with salt water. That's why we're here at Sanibel Wildlife Refuge to find out how much of this ecosystem is still intact. Certain animals are just not able to withstand high concentrations of salt. Mm -hmm. So m many of those animals we have not seen yet, and we're not sure if they're going to make it. So what is some of the research that you all are doing here? A lot of our research focuses on freshwater turtles. Yeah. So we can use this instrument here to actually test the salinity of these freshwater systems. After we test the salinity, we can actually track the turtles okay. with this radio transmitter. Okay. So this sends out a frequency. So yeah. Tina picks it up and we can go find where the turtle is. Mike and Chris are taking us turtle hunting with their tracking system. With this tracking data, they can determine the size of their habitat as well as analyze the behaviors after the storm. Designer wear. <laughs> yeah! Mike and Chris tell us that a reading on our meter between 0 and 3 is freshwater, and anything between 3 and 32 is brackish. Brackish water is essentially water that is too saline for freshwater creatures, but not saline enough for true seawater life. Ah, we're reading about 14. That's brackish. That's brackish water. So this fresh water system is no longer fresh. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we've got the salinity of this. Do you want to see how it affects the wildlife? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's go track some turtles. Oh, let's go. We're on the lookout for Florida mud turtles. They're super unique because they bury themselves under dirt and mud for months at a time. As you get closer and in the right direction of the turtle, it's going to get louder and louder. I hear it. I got a double beat. You seem to be right on it. Let's take this wire off right here. Okay. You can just get close enough. It's almost like a metal detector now. Oh. Oh, I got one. Okay. You can put the wire down. Okay, put the you, wire down. Yeah, what you want to do is you're going to keep just pulling out these leaves and dirt. And when you feel that shell on the transmitter, you go ahead and grab it and just gently pull it out. And then hand it over to me and I can show you everything on it. Mike, Mike you think I'm going to reach my hand? You got it? this, dude. Do they, do they bite? I mean, they bite, but just don't touch their mouth. <laughs> I ain't getting bit out here. You're good. You scooch in there. Uh, I'll get them. Let me see. You want to give it a good try? Yeah. Come on, come on. So, why didn't you stick your hand in? Were you scared? I wouldn't say scared. Mm -hmm. I was just being a little cautious. I didn't want to hurt him. A turtle hunter never gets scared. Mm, okay. <laughs> gently grasp your hand around it and just pull them out real gently. Oh. Oh, you really got him. Oh, my God. Yep. Dang. There you, there you go. That's your Florida mud turtle. Oh, wow. So as a species, how did the mud turtle do in Hurricane Ian? How many are surviving? The ones that remained in those water bodies, a lot of those did not make it. We took readings of those waterways, and the salinity was really, really high. But the ones that chose to go find a burrow on dry land, those did really well. It's just the ones in the water that did not do very well.